So welcome. So like I mentioned, we are with ISA. So ISA, it, well, we'll get into it in just a second, but we are um, here today to talk about serving and interning abroad, uh, really focused on experiential learning and doing missions abroad or interning. And so going forward, who are we? So ISA is an education abroad provider. We actually have programs in 30 countries. So all of those countries are here. I did realize I had a typo on this map. So if you were to count, you'll see 29. We also have Germany. I'm, I'm just missing the Germany dot. So forgive me. Um, we have programs in 30 different countries, and we also have different types of programs. You can do traditional study abroad. You can do an internship, which is what Chris is going to talk about, service learning, research, virtual program or a Christian faith-based program, which is our Veritas division. So ISA as a whole is actually a secular study abroad provider with a Christian division, um, Veritas, and then our internships division, which is actually secular as well. Um, but we'll get into that a little bit more as we go along. Um, so what do we do? We do everything. One thing that I always like to point out here is that um, something that I love about ISA is that we're literally with you every step of the way. So you'll get to talk with one of our program advisors when you're trying to pick the best program for you and try to figure out where, where you should study abroad, whether it's based off of your major or your career goals or things like that, or where you should intern. And they'll help you through that when apply. They'll help you with all of the forms. I use, I always joke, it's like, um, the fun forms that are just like the eHarmony, like housing questionnaire and stuff like that. It's not eHarmony. Oh my gosh, bad joke. Anyways, um, <laughs> moving on. Uh, and then we also have our on site staff while you're there on site. And they're there for literally anything that you need. Um, when I was a student, I actually got really sick while I studied abroad, and they were there to help me um, go to a doctor's appointment and go to the pharmacy afterwards. Also, on a really lighter note, like when we one night we wanted pizza, and we were like, where is the best place for pizza? And they drew us a map to their favorite pizza place. So they're really there for the big, the small, everything in between. And then we also have a really great alumni program when you return, where you could actually work as a global ambassador and get paid to promote your time abroad um, as a student at CBU. So you can work with Garrett, you can continue to work us and actually get paid just to talk about your time abroad. So full circle, we're with you every step of the way. Um, let me, next page. So why do we do it? We love our jobs. I will say for me, um, we love, so the standard answer on this slide is we love connecting our jobs and, or we love our jobs and connecting cultures. I personally, um, it's cliche to say that going abroad, studying abroad changed my life, but it's really true. Um, it changed my career path. It changed everything for me. And I had such a great time for me seeing how the Lord moves abroad um, and moves in different communities around the world and really wanted to help students plug into that. Uh, and so that's why I do my job. Um, and I'm not sure if Chris or Garrett, if y'all want to say anything about why, why you love doing what you do, but... If you want it or not. Sure. Um, <laughs> I'm the same way as Allie. My first time abroad, I went to Tegucigalpa, Honduras, and really changed my outlook on the world and, and what I wanted to do moving forward. Um, so, yeah, it's totally worth it if you have the ability. Um, I did service learning, so there's tons of options out there, as Allie mentioned before. You don't have to just do the typical study abroad, which is great. Um, but there are tons of options out there to get that international experience. Awesome. So next slide. Um, so why go abroad? And this is true for different types of programs, whether it's traditional study abroad or it's an internship or anything like that. Um, so you'll live out and deepen your faith. You will cultivate cultural awareness, gain new perspectives on the world, flex your foreign language skills. Side note here, you actually don't have to speak a foreign language to go abroad with Veritas. You can take all of your classes in English if you want. You want to take them in another language, awesome. You can do that too. Internships, Chris can speak to this in a second, but you don't have to speak another language to do an internship internationally either. Um, I will say sometimes, depending on what country you go, sometimes it's easier to have a foundational knowledge of the language in that country, but not not required. So like when I was in Peru, it helped that I was studying Spanish, but I could have gotten by without knowing Spanish too. Um, you will get comfort, comfortable out of your comfort zone. Um, I always joke that like my very small example of how I see this in my life is I now don't feel, feel self-conscious about going to a restaurant all by myself anymore. So abroad absolutely changed that. Um, that's a, like a 
just like side note, um, just funny story, but you just are really independent whenever you're abroad and it changes that whole dynamic. Um, but also grow in ways you never knew possible and form lifelong cross-cultural friendships. This is true for, you'll form friendships with locals from the country you'll go to. Uh, you may even form friendships with students from, or people from other countries that are also there and also the other students on your program too. Um, I actually still take an annual trip with uh, two of the girls that I studied abroad with. And um, I'm from Texas, one's from Tennessee, one's from Georgia. And years later, we still meet up once a year uh, just because of the relationship that we built. Also, um, at side note, if at any point y'all have questions, feel free to put them in the chat. Um, we are keeping an eye on that too as we go. But now I'm gonna pass the mic to Chris to talk specifically about our global internships. Thank you, Allie. Uh, first off, I apologize if y'all hear any background animal noises. I have cats and a dog and it's dinner time, so they're a little loud. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna talk a little bit about global internships. So we will go ahead and change the slide. So here is a snapshot of where we offer internships. Um, not at 30 locations, but we do have 11 different countries. Um, so you really have a wide variety of options to choose from. We have United States in there because we do offer programs in Denver, uh, as well as our global remote internships, which you can complete from the comfort of your own home. All right, so just a general overview. There are two different program options for you to look into internships. The first and most obvious is an on-site internship. So actually traveling abroad to do an internship. Um, like I said, there's 11 countries. These are unpaid opportunities and they are conducted in English. Now, let's say you wanna go to Spain. Uh, again, the internship is conducted in English, meaning your supervisor speaks English and the work that you complete is in English. However, we cannot guarantee that all of your coworkers know English. So like Ali said before, it's really good to start learning the language if you haven't already. And there are certain career fields that would require a basic knowledge of, um, of the language. So think about things that are really interacting with the public. So social work, healthcare, that kind of thing. Uh, our internships are full time. So you're working 32 to 40 hours a week really great opportunity to see what full-time work is like working that nine to five. Um, and so typically our students aren't taking any additional classes when they're doing their internship with the exception of maybe one course in order to gain that internship credit. Um, and you can do that in a variety of ways, either through, sorry, my dog sneezed, <laughs> either through um, Cal Baptist or we have our School of Record, Carroll College, um, to offer you. <coughs> or if you're not interested in doing academic credit, you don't have to. Now, the other option is our global, global remote internship program. This is a virtual internship, so you're doing it online. Um, there are two different options here that you'll see. The first is an individual placement, and that kind of mirrors what our on-site internships are like. We customize it to you, so depending on what your career interest is, um, and you're working directly with a host organization. Um, you can see here the hour commitment for these. You can see the um, time commitment. We offer eight weeks for full-time, which is 25 hours a week, or 16 weeks for part-time. And then for team-based placements, um, these are a really cool opportunity if you are interested in going into more of a consulting field, um, because that is really what these internships kind of look like. So you'll be working with a team of interns uh, for an Australian company that has put forth a challenge for you. So uh, maybe they want you to do market research for this new product that they're coming up with. So you work with your team members to do that market research and then at the end you do a professional presentation to the company. All right, we will move on from there. All right, so what is included? Now this is um, specific to our on-site internships as those are the most popular, um, but you can see here we cover so many of the important aspects of your program. So accommodation is huge. Um, so everywhere you go, we are covering your housing. Um, it includes a lot of career resources that I'm gonna go into in a little bit, 
Um, you've got support, like Ali mentioned, throughout the entire experience from when you have a general interest all the way to after you've completed your internship. You'll do a fun orientation on site where you'll get to know other interns. You'll do fun cultural activities through the city. Uh, we'll also have some excursions that are included in your program price. Uh, and full-time resident staff, just like Ali mentioned, for the Veritas program, you'll have that for the internships as well. All right. So, um, the professional development toolbox is a critical component of our program because not only do we want you to get that international experience, but we really want to help you in your career journey. So, we offer a ton of resources for you to help kind of move you along that career path. The first being career coaching. So I am a career advisor for our internships, meaning I will meet with you uh, once you apply to the program and discuss, you know, what are your career goals as of right now? Uh, what skills are you hoping to develop during this internship? Is there a specific type of company you'd like to intern with? And I take that information and work with our placement team abroad to find the right internship for you. We also offer career coaching after the internship. So once you've completed it, you can kind of get some help with, okay, now what? What do I do now? Uh, we have our career readiness course is an optional online course for all of our interns. Uh, and if you do complete that, you do get a kind of micro credential that you can post to your LinkedIn profile. Uh, it's just a really great addition to your internship to help you reflect a bit more. Um, to provide you with uh, resources on how to further develop your written communication skills or how to network abroad, things like that. We also offer on-site workshops for your professional development and a skill survey assessment tool. And this tool allows you to do a self-assessment of your skills at the beginning of the internship and at the end, and your supervisor will do the same thing. So you can actually see how you've progressed over the internship. All right, so just to share a little bit about what our alumni have said. Um, first off, soft skills is what we focus on more than anything. While we know that industry-specific skills, those hard skills are important, soft skills are going to go with you throughout your entire career. So if you change career paths, some of those hard skills may not be relevant anymore, but the soft skills definitely will be. So that's why we focus on those. Um, and our interns really feel like their experience, help them develop those. Um, tons of our interns have actually talked about their international internship experience in interviews. I just spoke with a student recently that said, yes, I was in an interview and um, the employer saw my internship in Dublin and was really intrigued by it and asked me to talk about it. So that's another thing to help you kind of stand out uh, with other applicants when you're looking at jobs or graduate school or anything like that. Uh, and like I mentioned here, so many of our interns agree that it kind of gives them a boost uh, over their peers. So um, obviously I am happy to talk to you all more about details uh, at the end of this presentation when you have questions or you can send them in the chat and I'm happy to answer. Um, but I encourage you to look into this a bit more. The process is so easy for you to apply, which is our goal. Um, so all you have to do is go to the ISA website, select the program you want, apply online. You'll do that advising session with me. We'll go through the matching process. You'll accept your offer and then you start your adventure. So we try and make it very smooth for you because um, if you have experience so far, job searching is difficult. Um, so we wanna make the internship search a little bit easier for you um, and kind of ease you into that experience a little bit. So we provide you guidance along the way, but we're doing a lot of the heavy lifting so you don't have to worry about it. Um, and that, I believe, is all I've got for internships. The mute button moves on you. Anyways, hi. Okay, so now I'm going to talk a little bit about our Veritas Christian Study Abroad Division. Um, so this is a program that works really closely with CBU. Uh, we actually, I don't have a map on here of our locations. We actually have locations in 12 different countries too. Um, 
they were on that first map, but we like internships don't have the 30, we have a smaller number. Um, but I also want to highlight because we have four signature programs for CBU students that I will get to highlighting in just a moment. Um, so we have programs in Latin America, Europe, uh, Africa, Asia, and the Pacific too. Um, but so the Veritas program is a little different than an internship. It is a faith-based study abroad program, whereas the internship is not necessarily. Um, so at its core, you have an ISA program. And what this means is that there will be students studying abroad in that location who are not adding a faith-based component onto their study abroad experience. So you may be there with five or six other Veritas students who are focused on um, the faith-based Christian aspect of studying abroad, but you might also be there with, you know, 30 to 40 other ISA students too. So it's really just a larger pool of people to become friends with, to be able to learn from each other and share about your experiences and backgrounds and things like that. Um, like I said, I did this program as a student and that was one of my favorite parts of the program was just getting to become close with the students on just the ISA program too. Um, but so at its core, you'll be on the ISA program. You'll be taking your courses at a host institution abroad. Also, I have a dog park outside this window and they are barking. So I also apologize for the pet noises. I don't have a pet, but other people's. Um, but anyways, so you'll be taking your courses um, at a host institution there. Uh, you will be in the same housing as the ISA students. Um, so sometimes that is an apartment, sometimes it's a dorm, sometimes it's a homestay. It just depends on where you go. Um, there are different excursions too. Uh, so when I was a student in Cusco, we went to Machu Picchu. Uh, we toured throughout the Sacred Valley. The Sacred Valley. Um, one excursion that I love to highlight is our students in Spain, in Sevilla, Spain, get an optional excursion to McNess, Morocco, actually, and you can go to Morocco. Um, there's also cultural activities throughout the program and different things like that. So you have that at its base. Then you're gonna add a mission mentor onto that. So we have a mission mentor in each location, which is somebody who's involved in local ministry. Sometimes they are missionaries from the US who are living abroad. Sometimes they are locally from that country. And other times, every now and then, we have a mission mentor who's from a completely third country is a missionary in that country. For example, um, our previous mission mentor in South Korea was actually a missionary from Pakistan. So she is a, a Pakistani national living in South Korea, working with our students from the U.S. to get them plugged into ministry, which was really cool. She's no longer a mission mentor because she actually um, was there for seminary, graduated, and is now a missionary um, in Malaysia. <coughs> But anyways, uh, so you'll have a mission mentor there. They meet with you once a week to help get you plugged into, um, when they meet with you for a Bible study, small group, uh, so for about an hour or two every week. And they help you get plugged into different missions while you're there, which we'll touch on in just a second, uh, and also into a church while you're there too. So like I mentioned, you'll be doing mission work while you're there. This is really different country to country. It's very important to us that students are partnering with ministries that were existing before you got there and are going to continue after you leave. So, for example, um, in Rome, our students are working with a refugee ministry there. Um, in Spain, students are teaching English language um, at um, an English language school for the church. And quite a few places, quite a few places throughout Europe have refugee ministry. Um, different countries in Latin America, you're working with like children's ministry or Sunday school ministry, uh, some campus ministry, campus outreach, um, different things like that, homeless ministry. It just really depends on where you go. Oh, and South, I'm sorry, in Costa Rica, our students work with an anti-sex trafficking ministry there, actually, um, where they uh, make coffee and cookies a couple times a week for um, the sex workers in the streets of San Jose and go out and minister to them with the organization that they partner with. Um, so it really just depends on where you go. And then finally, your last component to Veritas is a Veritas course while you're there. So while you're there, I mentioned that you'll be taking your courses at the host institution up here. That's in addition to one Veritas course that's taught semi-online, semi um <laughs> So you get an for semesters, you get the choice between a comparative religions course taught online or a missions practicum where you can get a transcripted credit for the mission work that you're doing. If you go during the summer, you just get a one credit mission practicum. Um, the neat thing about these courses is actually, so they're taught by us at Veritas, um, but as a Veritas student, you actually get two transcripts. Let's just say, for example, you go to um, 
let's say London. If you go to London, you'd get a transcript from the University of Brokenton, which is the university we partner with in London, in addition to actually a transcript from CBU, because CBU is where our transcripts come from for these courses down here. They're taught by Veritas, but CBU is our school of records, so there you go. You would, it's, it's interesting that uh, we, so we work really closely with CBU on the back end. Every student who does the Veritas program actually gets a CBU transcript. That's not just specific to y'all. Um, anyways, moving on. Um, Awesome. And then I mentioned the missions while you're there, the spiritual support and engagement. We already talked about this. I'll just throw this up here. These are some examples of the different ministry options. I know in New Zealand, we've had students that um, really feel called to worship, uh, do worship ministry at the church there in New Zealand. Um, in Prague, some students are doing uh, sports ministry. Um, most of these others happen at quite a few places throughout uh, throughout the um program or throughout the world as well. So let me go on. So like I mentioned, we have four highlighted signature programs with CBU. So CBU has chosen to highlight Costa Rica, Sevilla, Spain, and Prague. We have a lot of CBU students that do these, pro um, these programs. Uh, depending on what your major is, different ones might be different or better fits. Both Garrett and I can speak to you about that as well. Um, I will say, like I mentioned, in Costa Rica, our students work with the anti-sex trafficking ministry there. Paris is a lot of refugee ministry. Sevilla is English language ministry. And Prague is refugee ministry and sports ministry, too. Um, so quite a few different questions or different things. Sorry, I looked and saw that questions are happening in many ways. So let's talk funding. Um, it is possible to take your financial aid abroad with you and also um, apply for scholarships and things like this too. I know that Garrett's going to speak just a little bit later as to CBU specific finances. I can tell you that um, a lot of students take their federal like FAFSA financial aid with them. We also have scholarships that you can apply for as part of Veritas too, part of ISA and internships. Y'all have scholarships as well? Yes? Yes. Okay, awesome. Yep. Perfect. So check those out. And then Garrett, here you go. Passing the mic to you. Thanks, Ali. So yeah, the, the finances are a, kind of a big question for CBU students. So what I would tell you guys right off the bat is most of the time you can get your government aid, Pell Grants, Cal Grants, uh, different FAFSA, private loans. Um, but the thing that doesn't usually transfer, CBU scholarships. So if you have a music scholarship, that's a lot trickier to get that to, to transfer. Uh, but definitely look into ISA and, and uh, Veritas in scholarships because they have some good ones out there and I think not enough students apply. So um, taking a step back, go, what does CBU require from you guys if you're interested in exploring study abroad? Well, our, our main requirements if that are that if you're a freshman, you have at least one academic year at CBU. Um, so basically what I tell freshmen is if you're looking at studying abroad, start the process and then by the time you're done with your freshman year, you'll be ready for study abroad. You know, you've already gone through the application. Um, if you're transfer, a transfer student, you have to complete at least one semester. Uh, we, we check as part of the application that you're in good standing with student services, good student with, uh, good standing with financial aid, student accounts. There's also typically a GPA requirement. Um, usually that's 2.5, but it, it varies according to location. So South Korea, for instance, can be a little bit stricter, I think, on, on GPA requirement. Um, but again, that just, that just depends on where you want to go. So, oh, I, I, love, I love what you did with the PowerPoint. So just like I said, um, uh, there's a question on the GI Bill. We do have a section on our website all about that with study abroad. Um, we have had students use the GI Bill. So um, that's a very that's a, that's a possibility if, if you're on the GI Bill. Um, but let me know and I can send you the link and it has all those details. Uh, another thing you would want to do is check with vet, veteran services um, just to make sure that applies to your particular case. But so I mentioned the money. Again, I'll emphasize that you, you will get your government aid, your Pell Grants, Cal Grants, student loans. Um, in the next slide, I'm going to kind of go over what does that look like compared to CBU tuition. Um, but again, you can't use your scholarships that like your institutional aid. Uh, and then payments are all made through CBU and we send that, up, send that out to Veritas and ISA. Um, but you will pay Veritas and ISA the application fee, which right now is really cheap. It's about $21. Um, 
Um, and then there's a deposit usually when you're confirming your, your program. Next slide. So um, just a, a snapshot of, of what tuition costs for undergrads um, in the 2018-19 academic year. So you can see that the total on the bottom, about $22,000, $23,000. Um, Ali, could you go to the next slide? Now, if you look at the programs we have available for study abroad, I did a semester comparison and I also did a cost of living comparison. So almost all of the locations are going to be cheaper than Riverside. And that, that's what when it comes to cost of living. So housing, food, going to the movies, taking the bus, what does that look like? Um, almost all locations are cheaper. The exception is Paris because that's a big city. It's a very international city. So it's a little bit more expensive than Riverside. Um, but surprisingly, even Italy um, is, is, is comparable. And then when it comes to the semester itself, um, virtually all the programs are going to be less than CBU. But the, the thing to, to keep in mind is, again, if you're, if you're counting on those scholarships, you, you're not going to get those. So that, that can balance it out. But I, I would just encourage you guys that if you can, maybe, if you can afford a semester at, at CBU, I think you can work out study abroad as well, especially since it's going to be um, that there are some very cheap programs compared to CBU. And Garrett, I was also just going to mention real fast on um, the question about the GI Bill. Um, ISA will also give students a $500 discount if you receive the GI Bill as well. Um, so that's a fun fact on that. Awesome. And Garrett mentioned our $21 um, application deposit. That's just through the month of September for 2021 programs. So if you want to take advantage of that, you have two more days a day. Um, otherwise, it's a $95 application deposit. So. All right, thanks for, for that clarification. So, um, so if you guys are, are, are interested in, in maybe exploring more of your options, um, one of the next steps is just to reach out to, to our office. Um, set something up, we can meet virtually, or maybe just do a phone call. Uh, it doesn't have to be very long, but it's kind of a, a good way to explore what the next steps are, what the, the rest of the process looks like. Um, we're also gonna have you guys meet with your academic advisor and meet with your department dean or chair. It depends on what your major is. And basically that, that um, the, the reason we do that is so that you guys can really make sure that your academics are gonna work out if you study abroad. We wanna make sure that um, everything's gonna be able to transfer and it's gonna count towards your degree. So basically when you submit your application on the CVU side of things, um, the registrar's office is gonna basically evaluate your courses and you're gonna know even before you go hey, what is gonna count for my degree? You're not going in there blind. And uh, that, that kind of should give you some peace of mind knowing that, hey, I, I, I'll know my options. I'll know what, what, what my, my courses will transfer back as. So um, that, our application is all online. It's all through Teradata. Um, I can type the, the link for that after this, um, but, but also keep in mind that you still do have to apply to ISA Veritas. So applying to their program, but also making sure you're applying with CBU, so we're taking care of all these steps. And the, the deadlines as well, so October 10th for spring travel is coming up. If you guys are thinking about summer or fall, you have a lot of time to explore. Um, I, I recommend giving yourself as much time as possible so it's not stressful. Next slide. Uh, so here's our website. You kind of kind of see this, this portal. There's um, a lot of different links, a lot of different resources. So I, I encourage you guys to definitely um, go to our website, do some research, and we'll have a lot of links to ISA Veritas's programs as well. Awesome. So here's some contact information for both Garrett and myself. Um, if you have specific questions for Chris, shoot me an email and I can definitely get you in touch with her as well. Um, I highly recommend screenshotting this while or like grabbing it. Um, I did also before we turn this over to um, some Q&A time also the chat is still open so you can chat in there. I, I did also want to address one of that I think one of everyone's like burning questions is how does COVID affect study abroad um, and what does that look like in this current environment. I will say so we are still um, running some spring 2021 programs. We did not actually run any fall 2020 programs. We don't have any students abroad right now um, but we are still running some spring programs and we are optimistic um, especially about Europe. 
running. Um, that's not to say that others won't, but we're, we're more optimistic about, about Europe than some other locations. Uh, one thing, here's my general piece of advice um, for studying abroad with COVID. If you can wait until fall of 2021 or later, do. If you need to go abroad in the spring or that's your last opportunity, let's work together and make that happen. And the reason I say that is because even though study abroad is probably going to be possible for spring of 2021, it might look really different than what you've heard your friends or siblings or someone like that do. Um, for example, one of the big appeals to studying abroad in Europe or going abroad in Europe is always they get to travel on the weekends, right? That you get to spend, you might study abroad in Spain, but maybe you're spending the weekend in Prague or in Italy or in France, um, I think that's going to look extremely different just with different border closures, different quarantine times. We are actually looking at redoing our, um, or we are addressing our student uh, code of conduct right now to address that. Um, we are figuring out what we're going to do. We may not allow students to cross borders on the weekends or things like that just because you might have to come back in quarantine and we don't want it to affect your academics or anything like that. So we're still figuring that out, but it could look really different than what you're expecting. Another thing that might look different is housing. Um, we're evaluating right now whether or not <coughs> students will get to do home stays or maybe we need to lean heavily on just dorms and apartments right now um, for social distancing measures. So those are things that we are currently figuring out. Um, I mean, at the end of the day, we're not going to run a program if we don't feel that we can keep you safe doing so. Um, so, so that's my um, disclaimer about COVID. My general advice, though, if you can wait just a little bit longer, do. Like Garrett said, especially if you're a freshman, now's the time to really start planning and get ready to go abroad. But that's not to say that you can't go now either. But that's just my general advice on COVID. Um, but let's see. So uh, feel free to put any questions that you have in the chat. I'm also going to quit sharing my screen because I like seeing everybody and want to let you unmute yourself if you have questions or in the chat, um, we can address those too.